Hi there, ladies, and welcome back to Real Men, Real Insights. I'm, of course, your host, Antje Boyd, and today we're going to talk about invisible blocks that are hiding in plain sight that keep you single with dating and relationship expert Dave Elliott. Hey, Dave. Hey there. How are you? It's a pleasure to be back again. Thank you so much. Oh, I love to have you back. You have always so much wisdom to share. Look, we're sort of in partner look. We've both got the blue memo today, I, right? <laughs> good look. We're complimentary. Very nice. <laughs> it's so interesting. I'm like, for some reason, I feel like I'm supposed to wear blue today. Okay. Um, okay. So for those of you who don't know who this marvelous man is, he, uh, when it comes to relationship transformation, Dave Elliott is a noted expert, author, international speaker, and also an accomplished coach who gets results for his clients all over the world. He's especially gifted at teaching smart, amazing women how to bring out the very best in men rather than suffering through their worst. Whether he's sharing his expertise in books or products or some of today's most widely read relationship websites or on TV, radio or stage, you will come away with the new awareness, skills, and strategies to get the breakthrough results you really want and need. So welcome, Dave. That was a beautiful read. Awesome. Thank you very much. Oh, I'll take that as a compliment. Thank you very much. You're so welcome. Dave, tell us a little bit, how did you get into this arena of dating and romantic relationships and legendary love for life? Ah, well, great question. I was kind of my first client. I, some time ago, quite a while ago, I got divorced, 1999. It's going back a ways. Uh, and it was an area that I realized that there was some work that I needed. And so I began to study the best of the best, discovered personal development, uh, and found that relationship was the area that I most wanted to change for myself mm -hmm. so that I didn't experience it again. And I'm glad to say I learned a lot, helped myself. And now my greatest joy, my passion, my mission is to go and help other people to solve the challenge for themselves too. So I love studying the best of the best, learning what I needed to learn. And now I can pay it forward by teaching it to other people and kind of uh, my career at that time was a, I was a advertising person. So uh, teaching people elegantly, efficiently and easily what they needed to know was kind of what I love doing. So I love using my creativity to pay things forward and let people uh, take it on and digest it in, a, in an even more useful um, way that they could put into, into action immediately. So that's how I got started. I love it. Awesome. Awesome. And I love your title uh, because you, you say it's really like it's hidden in plain sight, right? You know, right. So let's talk about it. Like, so when single successful women come to you, right, who struggle with trust issues, attracting emotionally unavailable men, what do you start to see as some of the patterns that seem to be repetitive? So, well, I, you know, the saying is a uh, past is prologue. So the past leaves clues for the future. And if we don't learn from the past, we tend to repeat the problems. So what I like to do is I do a little bit of a deep dive. I start to understand people's history. I ask them questions. I actually developed uh, in, in my book that I put out a, a couple of years ago, I, I created a process called the HEART Assessment. HEART is an acronym, H-E-A-R-T. And basically I ask five questions and those five questions are actually incredibly revealing to me to help me understand what it, what it is about their past that might be un, unresolved issues hiding in plain sight. And now how I can now uh, bring a new uh, a, a new clarity to that and how understand how how that may be repeating again up front now in real time so uh, that's that's the area that I love to do is help them understand their past and how it might be affecting their future if it's not resolved awesome 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 so tell us a little bit more specifically what usually women come to you with what are some of the stories that they have which I know of course you talk about it even more in detail on your amazing podcast you know so you have so many amazing stories on there but what some are what are some of those stories so on the podcast the podcast is is called why haven't i found love yet and so basically i'm doing this deep dive with all these volunteers people that i don't yet know they fill out a, a brief uh, application telling me a little bit about their story and then i do this deep dive and i sort of help them 
in, into it and harvest clues from their past about understanding their future and where they might be getting hung up. So I work with a lot of amazing, accomplished women, especially in so many areas of their life, of their lives. They're, they're incredible in business. They're great uh, Mom, sometimes they're they're great in every other area. The one area they they are challenged with in uh, habitually is relationships, and so again, a lot of times that's because of these wounds that they have not noted or they're not again hiding in plain sight. So I, a lot of times it's about understanding men a lot better, um, healing unresolved stuff that they don't necessarily know is a, a bias or a prejudice or a wound, and then uh, helping them understand feminine leadership. A lot of times they've been rewarded for leading from masculine mm -hmm. and we all have both energies. And one of the examples that I give is, you know, as a coach, my core is masculine. Masculine is about single focus, outcome driven, solving the problem, fixing things. And that's absolutely what I want to do. But when I'm coaching women, especially uh, my first job is to create a safe space to to sort of allow them to open up, be seen, and feel safe. Safe is the number one need for feminine. And so I'm actually helping them relax back into feminine by creating this nurturing space where they feel understood and, and safe and, and free to share mm -hmm. and well-received. And that in its nature is feminine leadership. So even though my core is masculine and I'm outcome driven and I want to solve the problem, the best way to do it is to access feminine leadership. And so I just opt into that because it's the smartest way to do it. So we're so talking today about real men and real insights. Like what are some of the things when it comes to understanding men specifically that women are not getting that they're coming to you with and they don't, yeah, they don't have really like a hold on that and a grasp on that. Right. Well, see, I think the cardinal mistake that we both make and look, I'm, I'm equal opportunity. I, I love the masculine, I love the feminine, and we both need one another. They're both awesome and they're different. And so a lot of times there's a bias or a prejudice, like, you know, sometimes men are, are treated as like these emotionally dead, they don't care about anything, but they're again, single focused outcome driven. Uh, and they, they're they very, um, very much focused on getting a result and things that aren't as important to them. And, and so that's logic and analysis and emotions are sometimes pushed to the side unless they're going to help in some way. And so that might seem or read on the surface as like emotionally dead, uncaring, uh, all kinds of ways you could skew that or look at that. And that's just not helpful. Um, when you understand the, the essence and, and there's a reason for it, Uh, and there's a way to elicit emotion. Men are absolutely emotional too and can be incredibly strong. Uh, there's also benefits to the um, to the exa the other example. Um, you know, for instance, if you're going through a really tough time, uh, do you want someone who's emotionally overwrought, or do you want someone who's rather pragmatic, stoic, grounded, centered, knows who they are, puts his arm around you, and says, "Maybe I know it's okay. We're going to be all right. I got this." And if he is freaking out with his hair on fire just as much as, as someone who is more in their emotions at that moment, he's not going to be able to do that. And so that's really the benefit. So it, it's how we, we make the best of it. And the two of us together are going to do a lot better because uh, we both bring things to the table that are important and valuable. And it's about seeing them as, as just benefits also and not just what's wrong. It's going through the world and seeing what's great rather than all of a sudden or all of the time what's wrong and what's not working and what's broken so so can you give us like a specific story of um of a woman when it comes to comes to exactly that so that the women actually know what you mean by when you say um you know emotional mm -hmm. stoic right like if you can just give a specific example i will give you one um and you know what I'm, I'm going to, this is a really raw and uh, this, I'm going to be honest. Uh, yeah. I, I was the guy that screwed this up, actually. I, got, I told you I got divorced in 1999. One of the reasons that I got divorced, we had a child on our second child. My, my wife had a miscarriage and I did not understand. Remember, I just told you about the emotion thing. I didn't even know I was going to talk about this today, but you're asking me for an example and it just popped in. Okay. I was less than sensitive because pragmatic outcome driven we were trying it was weeks later and she was upset and I made the huge error that I regret very very much to this day I said I, I know I'm sorry it happened 
why can't we get over this? We're going to try again. It's going to be okay. And I was really just totally insensitive and I'm not trying to defend it. I didn't know what I know at this time. You know, I'm, I'm kind of ashamed of it, kind of embarrassed by it. I'm not debilitated by it. I wish I hadn't done it um, because now I understand it way better. But because I was single folks outcome driven trying to solve the problem, I was not going to sit here and I couldn't access the emotion and fall apart about it. Mm -hmm. um, and so there was a fundamental disconnect and it was probably one of the main reasons why I think that uh, that marriage ended. It was, it was a big disconnect. And again, I learned from it. So it was a, thanks for asking about the question, bringing it back. But yeah, you know, the thing is, if we're going to be, we're going to tell the truth here, we're going to be honest and we're going to, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. we're going to get a result about it uh, mm -hmm. is not my finest moment. And it was one that I've learned from and now I can speak about it. I could teach about it. And yeah. it wasn't because I was insensitive and didn't care. Mm -hmm. I cared very much, but I also, I wanted, I wanted to transition to moving forward. Yeah. You know, but I, I was just at a different speed. You know, I was yeah. looking to move forward before she was ready and she wasn't on board at the time. And it felt like being misunderstood to her. Totally. Totally. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, and now that we're also talking about tools, right? Like what can a woman do, right? So if that woman was coming to you and would actually have a man who is more stoic, like single focused, driven, all of that, right? Like mm -hmm. what can she do? Well, to invite him more in a way, right? And, you know, be more patient or whatever it is. Like, I don't know, you tell me. Well, the answer in that moment, I mean, and again, like I don't, um, I don't, I don't wish that it changed or anything like that. I learned from it. It was painful. Um, I'm sorry for the experience. Uh, what would change everything, though, is to say, um, look, I'm not looking for that right now. What I need you to do is be here with me. I need you to understand. I'm not ready to move on and not make him an insensitive, terrible, awful man who doesn't get her, who's mm -hmm. emotionally dead inside. Mm -hmm. Like, it's essentially, it's the story you tell yourself. It's like, we take all the evidence, we cherry pick the evidence, we create a narrative, and the narrative is insensitive jerk. <laughs> and anything that fits inside there is is used if it doesn't fit inside it's it's negated so all the other examples of times when i was i was very emotional or i was very kind or very sensitive or very thoughtful that gets put out there because you only focus on you believe this guy um and so we're cherry picking evidence to support a narrative and look i just think everybody's entitled to some bad days some bad decisions some bad moments um don't throw out the entire situation based on a prejudiced viewpoint in a moment when you understand there are benefits to that masculine. And it wasn't that it was totally un, uncaring. It wasn't anything about that. It was just like, yeah, I get that. It happened. I know. And now let's try to move on, you know? Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. And what else can a woman do like to understand men more because I mean I learned so much being with Brody I actually learned to forgive men so that's why we're putting on this panel right because it's really it's so life-changing and it's so transformative when women can really start to understand how a man takes so what are some of the other oh, okay. do? It's, so similar to that one another one is like if you tell a man about a problem at work like it's almost really difficult for us not to try to solve the problem because you're asking us you know you're telling us of this story and i'm like well you should say this or you should do that or you should never let her talk to you like that or, or we it's almost really hard to learn she's not looking for a solution she's mm -hmm. looking to be heard she's looking to be understood and so making the distinction and learning and say you know if you come home from work one day and you say look um having a, a conversation you say look i just want to tell you about what happened today i don't i'm not looking for solutions on how to fix it i just want to hear i want you to hear me give me like five minutes i'm going to unload this and once i get it off off my off my chest off my shoulders i can get rid of it i can i can put it away and or it's actually one of the most beautiful things you do to a man to say i've got a problem and i'm not sure what to do with it can i tell you about it and see if you can come up with a thought on how to solve it you like, know oh ooh, i get to solve it i get yeah. Yeah, yeah. What do you got? What do you got? Tell me. Because mm -hmm. we actually like the challenge. We we rise to the challenge. We love to solve problems and fix things. And so if you give us something to fix and you're open to our solutions, that's that's awesome. Like we the other thing too is understanding that men, um, since they're young, young boys, they we have this innate desire to want to be the hero. 
which again comes from solving and fixing things. And if you see men as potential heroes in waiting rather than, you know, insensitive jerks who think you can't solve your own problems or whatever the story is, or people that always leave or, or whatever the story is, again, fits inside that narrative. Whatever fits in is kept. Whatever doesn't fit in is deleted because it's inconvenient. It's an inconvenient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, when you, and really I teach men the same thing too. see the greatness in people, you know, she's just uh, not totally emotional all over the place and making no sense. Right. Like Mm -hmm. there's, there's a beauty in that. There's the, there's, there's the, you know, feminine leadership is about nurturing, is about um, creating understanding, asking questions, communication, wow. you know, building people up, helping them find their way forward, servant leadership, seeing, seeing, their, seeing their greatness and helping move them into positions where they can um, excel. I mean, that's part of feminine leadership. It could be incredibly powerful, but it's not, you know, it's not from the masculine single focus outcome driven. It's more relationship based. You know, so it's, it's, nobody's misbehaving in other words, you know, just seeing the greatness in everybody and, and what we all bring to the table and how we can all excel and move forward together. So let me give you actually like a specific scenario that I hear from, gosh, I've, you know, had now over thousands of women coming from all over the world, just like you. And one thing that I hear, so did they go on a first date, right? And um, of course, they have their coping mechanism because they have a wound from their childhood and so on, which made them fearful avoidant in the first place. But it's some version of like not good enoughness, right? Mm-hmm. And um, and then what happens is, it, you know, they of course try to cover it up because we put our best foot forward. And so tell us how a woman can actually show up. Of course, assuming she has a man with more masculine qualities in front of her, because all the women that come to me mentioned qualities that are more in the masculine category they want to feel supported they want to feel cherished right so it's like that would be a masculine that would provide that for you right so what can a woman do in that moment when she feels you know she has this masculine man in front of her and she feels tempted to lead the conversation or just put it all in him and what could she do instead that still still allows him to be the masculine right but also for her to be actually authentic and transparent right versus hiding that right. insecurity and tra- right. pretending you know she's like this is independent she doesn't need anyone and so on <laughs> well that the last thing you said that miss independent doesn't need anyone so that's the last thing a man wants to see for like you know he's always looking is there a job here for me mm-hmm. and so if you act like I don't need anyone. I got my ex so together. Mm-hmm. But it's also we can feel when you know how we can feel when people are being in integrity, or people are telling the truth, or uh, or people are just BS and you know trying to act like they got it all together when you know darn well there's something that's not uh, in alignment essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, so the first thing I would say is like the truth is we're a little bit on our own journey. Like uh, other people can support you on your journey, but no one can do it for you. So like. I think what is really beautiful and breathtaking is when someone is just open and vulnerable and says, look, this thing happened. I'm on, I'm on a journey. I'm working on it. I might not be there yet. Mm -hmm. Um, And and just taking some ownership of that. And and man, especially that calls out the hero in them. I'm like, Oh, I got it. Mm -hmm. Right. How Mm -hmm. can I support you? Mm -hmm. I got it. And we, we, we totally respect that. You know, we, we, I, I love it, especially when I, because when I have a, a client in that place, I know that it's like, boom, they're really, really close to there because when you can tell the truth about it, like I said, I just had that embarrassing story about my past, yeah. but when I can tell you about it and just say, look, it was my finest moment, uh, but I'm going to share it because people can learn from it, you know? So uh, I think that's powerful. And that's when you're so close to there, no one can ultimately do it, but we can all support and we can all pull together and say, you know what? I really admire the fact that you're on this and you're doing it. And, you know, again, I'd say the biggest challenge that, you know, my clients, these super achievers, people who do really, really well in so many uh, amazing categories is just being open and vulnerable, you know, uh, mm-hmm. because that's the last thing they want to do to seem like they don't have it all together. Uh-huh. They don't know the answers. And, you know, it's actually disarming and, and charming and, and it pulls you closer to makes you want to support, you know, it's mm-hmm. like I said, if you, if you're dating someone and it seems like you're a superwoman, you got it all together. The guy's looking saying, what do you even need me for? I don't see a job here. I don't see that you're open to my gifts mm-hmm. and he'll continue on his way. And they'll be like, well, I thought he was a good candidate. He was, he was so good. 
he was looking for an opportunity to be able to serve you and, and be your man and be your support uh, and, and see the greatness in you. But all he saw was your, you know, superficial greatness, but not the areas where he could actually support, you know, mm -hmm. nobody expects everyone to be anyone to be perfect. Um, mm -hmm. What we what we hopefully expect is the people who are doing the best they can to be the best version of themselves. And they come together as healed and as whole as possible on the journey. And if we can help along the way, that's, that's a bonus. Uh, not everyone has this understanding, but between the two of us, there's a lot more people and more coming online all the time. That's why we're doing this, right? So we're having these conversations and hopefully, you know, bringing such value to people so that they can do their work and, have people coming together and be just more conscious and more whole and more um, healed. So one specific question, I have like this whole script running in front of <laughs> in my eyes right now, right? So we're still in the first state. And so now let's say the man was like, uh, maybe talking a lot about himself, right? And so, so she wants to set a boundary, but she doesn't want to emasculate him, right? Like what can she do on the date to make sure she doesn't, you know, she's like, okay, I need to say something because otherwise I have to leave my body or I have to become passive aggressive or something, right? Because I'm about to explode. And, right. you know, you, you know, so what can she do in, in, in order to be authentic, right? What you think, what you say, and what you do needs to be in alignment. So now she needs to just say something, but how can she do that and not emasculate him? Because that's something that's that hear all the time from women. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so what I would say is that's an opportunity to be elegant. And, and to say, you know what? You are clearly a really impressive guy. I've heard a lot about all these things and you got it. I'm, I'm sold. I see your greatness. Here's what I also want to know. Tell me a time when you were a little bit vulnerable. Tell me a time when you weren't sure about something. Tell me, tell me a time when you doubted yourself. Tell me something about that. Because I, I know you've got it together. I'm clear on that. I want to see this other side of you too. Tell me about a time when you didn't quite have it so together or tell me about something that, that worries you a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so you're creating this safe space where he can. And if he's okay with that, he'll, he'll go into it. Like you, like you did to me when I, when you asked me a question, I'm like, totally. I'm going to tell this story that doesn't feel good, but I felt safe to do it. Um, so it's, it's great. Men who have done the work will do it. And you've already acknowledged the, the bat, the, you know, the thing is, what you're saying is, okay, clearly you're working hard to impress me. Great job. You've done it. I'm impressed. Yeah. Now I want to hear this other thing. I want to see the side if you, uh, if you can be uh, open, if you can be vulnerable with me, if you can share something with me. Because I'm, I'm looking for real. I'm looking for someone who is not about just appearances, who's not going to put on this facade. I want to get beneath the facade and I want to find out who you really are. And do you think that's okay to do that on a first date? That's a good question too. I mean, it depends on how well the date's going. <laughs> I mean, if you see like, wow, this this person has real potential. Mm -hmm. um, I think so. I think you can. It's a little heavy for a first date. I mean, you want right, to have right. there's a little bit of an unfolding yeah, process. Yeah. Um, and look, I I think I am the world's biggest believer in the female intuition. You know, I, in all the years I've been doing this and it's quite a, quite a lot now. Um, I, I've heard women say uh, so many times, Oh my God, I knew this was going to happen. But what I've never heard anyone say is I, I wish I hadn't followed my intuition on that. Not one time. <laughs> right. So, so your intuition really knows your intuition tells you it's that feeling in your gut. Most of the time people regret not listening to it. They don't regret listening to it so you your intuition will tell you is this a man who's going to go there yeah mm -hmm. totally right. and so okay so let's say it maybe it is a little heavy for the first date right but so let's say she wants to bring a conversation back to her so maybe it's a guy who just talks about himself period no matter what it is positive or negative right how can she just like interrupt him and make sure he focuses on her like he invests in her right there's like a lot of investment towards right, right. him and how can she bring that investment and that focus and that awareness back to her again without emasculating him, without making him wrong, right? And mm -hmm. still, yeah. <laughs> in an that's a tough way. one because again, that's here's the thing: you're starting to see who they naturally are. But again, if you acknowledge it and say, you know what, 
you're an impressive man, clearly. A lot of great stories. I'm very, I am impressed. I'm just curious, what would you like to know about me? And so you, you create that opportunity and you're not being direct, you're not being attacking, but you're saying, wow, I really get a great understanding of who you are. Mm -hmm. You must have some questions about me. What would you like to know about me? And then what and would a typical yeah. man would you say? Like, if you just like put yourself in the man's shoes, like how, how do you think you would perceive it? It, well, it depends on the man. The caliber <laughs> right. of the man. If the man is really just self-centered and uh, right. you know, all about his own experience, uh, he might not react very well, but that's also great information. Right. Uh, if he is like, oh, right. If he if he's like, you know what, I was trying so hard to impress her, I was oh. only talking about me. Yeah. He he might take it, but again, you didn't embarrass him. Mm -hmm. you, you didn't you didn't make him wrong. Yeah. You just yeah. said, like, you know what? You've done such a great job impressing me. I'd kind of like to impress you. What do you want right. to know about me? I've got some good good stories too. Yeah. You know? So yeah. It, it sort of gives him a heads up without necessarily making him wrong. Mm -hmm. And and again, that's a great way of like if if he's partnership material, can he take that kind of feedback mm -hmm. and and respond and mm -hmm. say, oh yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. And I was a little single focus outcome driven I was only focused on my outcome you're right I wasn't asking you enough questions wait tell me about you tell me about your you know what what you love tell me who you are you know that so I think these are great things to find out on a first date do people uh handle feedback that way do they accept it warmly mm -hmm. and do they appreciate it or do they push back or are they you know mm -hmm. self-centered do they suck in, suck up all the oxygen in the room and only talk about themselves it's all great feedback you know mm -hmm. yeah so. totally we had like uh just total side note but we had like we have usually people reach out to us want to be on a podcast and whatever right like other experts and and then I did the same thing what you just said, right? I'm like, oh, this is great. So great. You're such an expert, trauma and all that wonderful. What questions do you have for me? And she's literally, I don't know. I'm like, okay, we're done. Conversation's over. Like, you're never going to be on my podcast, you know, like, oh, wow. wow. So you're talking about yourself for like 10 minutes. So it's, again, the story here is it's a good distinction, right? Because in that moment I knew, thank you. And it's the same for the woman who's like, you don't have any questions. You don't really want to know anything and okay well bye you know right. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna call my girlfriend right. now you know <laughs> you know and I remind people all the time too it's like I'm, I'm always a little bit surprised by this like I, I tried to illustrate with numbers again here's the pragmatic side mm -hmm. of me mm -hmm. um, like here's the thing people because we coach achievers right achievers are not used to not getting the result they want. And so what that means is sometimes they'll go on a date that doesn't go well and, and they'll use it to feel bad. And it's like, well, I think you're missing something here. Mm -hmm. If we do the numbers, I did this with a group I was coaching once. I said, all right, look, um, big case scenario. Yeah. What do you think is the average number of people, the people will date in a lifetime? I'm talking about like, let's say first dates mm -hmm. uh, and then in, separate out like people that you dated for six months or longer uh were engaged to or were married to and what became you know like i've talked to people who said i had a thousand online dates and i was like that's prolific and she, like it never worked with any of them like wow okay and then somebody i've said uh, you know they married their high school sweetheart right and they've never dated anyone else right mm -hmm. so in between that continuum mm -hmm. I, I said it on like this mean average in the group I was talking to is say, you know, maybe someone has 40 dates, right? Mm -hmm. You know, over a course of years, maybe they got married once, uh, got divorced, a couple of, the, and so I said four out of 40. Yeah. Four out of 40 become relationships, 40 just one-time dates, like nice to meet you, thanks so much, mm -hmm. good luck, you're, you're an awesome person, but I don't necessarily feel a match here, right? Yeah. So four out of 40 means it's one out of 10. That means for nine out of 10 are not supposed to be successful. Mm -hmm. And successful people <laughs> have trouble with the mathematics of that situation. Like, what do you mean it's not supposed to go anywhere? I'm like, it's not supposed to go anywhere. It's you learning about them, them learning about you. And it's you finding out who, who has the values, who has the interests, who is the, the, you know, the aspirations, who has this, you know, similar values that are meant to go the distance. Right. Nine out of 10 people are probably just not going to be a good match, but it's still a great experience to get to know them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, achievers have trouble with 
failing mm-hmm. nine out of 10 times because they're not comfortable with that idea. So it's, it's, it's a bit of a, a stretch of the mind to say, no, no, it's not supposed to work like that. If you're doing this properly, you're, you're seeing, you know, my cardinal rule on a date is look for what's great. What do you love about that person? Mm-hmm. Reflect it back and leave them better than you found them. You know, you, did, you don't necessarily have to see them again, but tell them what you like about them and leave them better than you found them. And if you do that, I think we collectively, you know, raise the level of the entire dating pool. You totally. know? So instead of ghosting people, which is, you know, everybody says that's the number one complaint in online dating now is people that ghost people. Mm-hmm. Uh, my friend Logan Yuri wrote a book and she put in an article and a uh, she works for Hinge, and she wrote this thing where she says, had it in her phone notes. It said, hey, it was basically something like, hey, it was really nice meeting you. Uh, I'm not necessarily sensing there's a match, but I can clearly tell you're a great person. And I wish you luck out there. And you just put those words in something to that effect in your phone. And it, if you go on a date and that you don't think you want to see that person, send it, text yeah. it. Just Same. like copy paste, you know, yeah. you don't have to get the resistance. Yeah. People would much rather hear that than not know That's because right. it's just the not knowing that feels so, so terrible. And so share that with them. And, and the thing is, she was, she was illustrating in that, that when we don't do that, we actually feel bad and it takes our value down a little bit because we know we hate being ghosted. If uh-huh. we ghost someone else, we're like, oh, I'm not really mm-hmm. proud of that. I'm embarrassed. I wish I hadn't done that. And so if you want to feel good about who you are and how you're showing up, don't ghost people. Just be straight up saying, you know what, you're awesome. And I know you're going to find someone. I don't necessarily think there's a match here, but you know, I wish you good luck. And and then we can feel good about ourselves and how we're showing up. So look, if everybody listening just takes down that little note, puts it in there and fires it off, like, again, we raise the entire level of the dating pool and people don't have to sit there and wonder and feel bad. And again, if we remember that nine out of 10 are not supposed to work, we stop, Boom. you know, worrying about all this, like, oh my God, I knew I shouldn't have said this. Totally. I knew it. This was the problem. I knew I shouldn't have worn that. I knew I should have said this or whatever. Totally. You know, totally. It's not true. And and there's actually two things that I tell my women too, right? First of all, treat others the way you want to be treated. So when would you like to know? Mm-hmm. And then the other one is, well, think about it this way. This guy, you tell him right away after dinner, like, I'm not interested. He can go back online, right? But if you don't do that, then he's going to get attached and he's going to tell himself the story and waste all this time, right? So he could already be somewhere else the next day. You could already be recovered. That's the other thing too, right? We are resilient emotionally, but right. so much to talk about, so little time. So Dave, for the women who are like interested in hearing more about your wisdom, obviously clearly you have so much to share. You also have like your, your brand new book out and all of that. Um, what's the next step that they can take with you? So I would love it if people would check out my podcast, uh, Why Haven't I Found Love Yet? And I, the way I'm talking to the people that I'm talking to, a lot of times you'll feel like I'm talking to you because their stories are sometimes very similar to yours. There's always like a nugget or two. So if you check out the, the podcast, I would love that. And, uh, you know, I also, uh, the book that I'm talking about where I have this heart assessment uh, thing where I help people find their, um, those uh, little blocks to love that are hiding in plain sight. Uh, I've got the, the heart assessment is in my book, same shit, different date. And it takes about it's the same things that keep happening over and over. It's in the dating industry or in the dating people that you date. So if you find that you're dating the same types of people over and over again, get this book, you know, because it'll, it'll save you a lot of trouble. Um, mm-hmm. And so I talk about that in the podcast and I'm also giving away a, a free preview version of the book for, uh, as my gift here. So if people go onto my website at the link that's on your page there, they can download a, a couple of chapters from the book and get some information. And if they like it, go get the rest of the book, listen to the podcast. You'll get a lot of information from the podcast. And I think it'll really help. Uh, it's kind of fascinating to just listen to other people's stories and you find out, oh my gosh, like I get that. I felt that way too. Or, oh my God, I've done that exact thing. Or, he could be talking to me, you know? So I hope they'll check that out too. Awesome. Awesome. Ladies, of course, the link is below this video. Like Dave just shared. Thank you so much for being here today, Dave. It's been really, really insightful and very specific. I'm sure that women have taken a lot of notes. And for the ladies out there, I will talk to you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.